Hello and welcome back to the final video in this tiny little series, this mini-series inside the Daily Decembers, where we're looking back at 2018 as a whole. And yesterday we looked at the moment of 2018, the day before we looked at the players of 2018. Today we're looking at the alternative moments of 2018. So the first moment for me, we're going back to Easter time. It was the game after Middlesbrough, the Hull game, where we saw two moments of... You had to be there to believe that it happened. Due to his red card against Middlesbrough, Matt Doherty was missing for the game against Hull. I mentioned previously how important Doherty was, and it was only really at that moment we saw how important he was. They tried playing Ryan Bennett there, they tried playing Ivan Cavalero there, and it was about, with 20 minutes to go, Wolves were losing 2-1. They threw on young Oscar Boo Rasmussen, who had never, he played against Bristol Rovers in the League Cup previously that season. We haven't seen him again, albeit for some friendly appearances in the pre-season, but I don't know whether we'll ever see him again. But he popped up with that goal, little header, the back post uh, to equalise in front of the South Bank. That was a particularly great moment in that game. But then also in that same game, uh, there was Ball Boy Gate, <laughs> where the Hull, Hull were desperately trying to stay up at the bottom of the table and were really pleased to be leading and they were trying to waste time. The ball went into their technical area and it took a Ball Boy to run in and shove Nigel Atkins out of the way to get the ball back and pointed at his watch. Now, rumours have it that he was sacked after that, uh, but then was reinstated due to a massive popular demand. But yeah, I really enjoyed that moment. The next memorable moment, the next alternative memorable moment for me, is the whole Sheffield Wednesday game, apart from the actual game itself. We got to the Molyneux really early, about 1 o'clock or so, half past 12 on that day. Lots of people lining the streets, flares going off, greeting the coach. Never seen uh, so much love between the fans and the players. I've seen Wolves being promoted to the Premier League three times now. 2003, they had that open top parade. And, and then 2009, there wasn't really any sort of celebrations. But the, the emotion of that one, winning the league for the first time, was uh, incredible for, for me, personally. But then, seeing so many people out on the street and so such a big celebration before the game was... It was amazing. The match itself was completely forgettable. But then afterwards, just seeing the Wolves players with that trophy again, and a particular a particular highlight for me was Nuno running with the trophy the whole length of the pitch and then dropping it in front of the South Bank. And then a week or so after that, uh, the parade around Wolverhampton. It, they were lucky with the weather. It was a beautiful, beautiful day. A scorching hot day in Wolverhampton. Roughly 80,000 to 100,000 people out on the streets, 30,000 people in West Park as well. Just shows you the potential of, of Wolves as a club. Yes, there might be lots of children there and hopefully they're inspired to come and follow their local team rather than go and follow Manchester United or Chelsea or whatever, Liverpool. They'll be here at Wolverhampton they can see Premier League football and the way that they followed that up now this season is is superb. And that was that's a moment for me. If we can get another couple of thousand young Wolves fans come into the ground when it starts being expanded that's going to seal our future as a as a top top club and hopefully we can keep that atmosphere that lots of top clubs have lost since you know Manchester City is the prime example that they had this core of really good supporters but then have lost that with the it's been watered down with their success hopefully we can keep that um, by staying at Molyneux and, and all sorts of different things. And then I think everybody's alternative moment of the year was the moment that we it was announced that Carla Kimi was in remission from leukaemia. Having been diagnosed back in July 2017, he's had uh, a really, really tough year. There's a really great article in The Guardian with Carla Kimi uh, just before the season started uh, where he goes into a lot of detail about how he's felt at the time and his mental uh, approach to it as well, which is quite amazing. The fact that he said that he was grateful that it wasn't terminal um, and he, that how lucky he felt he was. And it's been great to see him on the pitch now a couple of times, uh, at half-time and before the game, at the Man City game and Chelsea game, I think it was. And he's been on the Old Gold Club podcast as well, talking about his illness. I think it'd be great if he could have some role at the club eventually, or as an ambassador, or as a coach, or whatever. I know that he's had offers to go and be the Nigeria assistant coach and things like that. 
that personally that was a really really big moment of, of this year anyway thank you very much for watching today's video and don't forget to like and subscribe and vote for your alternative moment of the season in the poll in the video bye <laughs> i'll see you next time bye bye